Okay, before moving on, let's add some more information to our index page. Currently, we cannot we cannot know which table we are looking at. Uh, we don't have any information being displayed on the index page. So let's change that. Let's go to our index page and add a h4 tag saying currently viewing Mm, currently viewing header so this header is going to be a is going to be additional information that is being passed by the view so let's go back to the view and remember we, pa we were passing in items as an information when while we are rendering this index page let's also pass a header tag and we are going to say laptops so when when the index page is being rendered it's going to take this specific this specific key and going to sub substitute this value in place of this header so let's do that to all the all the three functions instead of laptops you're going to say desktops and mobiles i think that will be enough for us to see the change okay currently viewing laptops currently viewing desktops and currently viewing mobiles Okay, so to add information to our model, first we need forms. If you are familiar with HTML, CSS, we, you you normally know that you will have to have forms to enter information into the database. So, let, so let's define forms. Django already provides a lot of uh, base forms which you can inherit from to reduce the, num uh, the lines of code which you have to write. So to do that, let's define a new file called forms for py. Now let's start defining the forms. To start uh, to import forms, they are present in the Django Django module. Import forms. Now uh, we have to be a little careful while defining the forms. You have to make sure that all the uh, all the labels in the form must correspond exactly similarly exactly to the models file which you have defined earlier. So for laptops, let's say we have laptop form. We have to import this from model form. Sorry, I mean we have to inherit this from model form. In a similar way, we need to have desktop form. That also has to be imported, sorry, inherited from model form. Class mobile form. We do the same. Now, for each form, we need to have a, another class called meta. We have to override this class, which is defined in the model form. In this meta class, first we have to define uh, which model this form currently currently corresponds to. So, let's say model equal to laptops. This is laptop model. We have to do the same with every other form. This, this form currently corresponds to desktop model. This form currently corresponds to mobile model. Okay, I forgot to do this. Okay. Now, when we are rendering this form, we have to tell tell Django which forms which it should exclude and which forms it should it should include. So, we can mention that using the fields. Make sure these names uh, exactly correspond to the names that are being that were that were defined in the models file. Price, status, and issues. Uh, you might be wondering why we are not inheriting from the maybe say device form and why we are rewriting the entire code. It's because we, even if we inherit from the device form, we have to <coughs> override again the meta class. So that basically it serves no purpose of inheritance because we still have to mention model equal to laptop, model equal to desktop and model equal to mobile. So we have to override the meta class. So once that's done, now we are ready to uh, write the add item forms, I add item views in our views.py. So let's begin. So let's call this view as add laptop. We are going to pass request. And let's say if the if the request comes as a post request, if request dot method equal to post, we're going to do something. And if it comes as a get request, we're just going to display the form. 
we're going to show the laptop form because it's a laptop function and return render we're going to pass a request add new.html this we haven't defined yet we will just define it in a second and we are going to pass the context as the form which we just defined so what is post and get request now if there is no information currently present in the form and the url has been just accessed it's going to be as a get request because it's trying to get the form so then we are just going to display an empty form but yeah, after entering the details and if we click on click on the submit button that request is going to be converted into a post request and that is when we'll validate the form and we'll validate the form like this form equal to laptop form we're going to do request dot post and if form dot is valid form dot save and we're going to return redirect to the, we're going to redirect to the index page now what we should do is we have to uh, define the add new dot html page that we have mentioned here let's do that quickly new file add new dot html in the same way as we defined uh, the index page we are going to extend this the with the base dot html so that it has the same uh, nav bar already present and we are going to replace the body and the hand block Now, in uh, let's have a div tag class container. Let's say the form method is post. We don't need a class. Make sure you remove the action. Don't have an action right here. And if the method is post, we're going to render the render the field. Uh, how are we going to render the fields? Okay. For field in form remember form is just like a list field in form form group row we're going to say label id in field dot name let's give it a class label we're going to render the field dot label mm. okay this makes sure that the entire all the all the elements in the page are in the same line let's render the field right here let's end for And let's add a submit button. Type submit. Let's give it a class button primary and give it a name add device. Okay, I think that that will be enough for our add new HTML. And uh, next up, we have to link this with the URLs, URLs page, I mean URL element. Let's do that same thing we start start the link and the link and now we're going to say add laptop add laptop and we're going to give it name add laptop don't forget the comma and i think that will be enough now let's go to our index page and redefine this pound symbol to the url that we just defined URL add item. Wait a second, what do you define? Okay, add laptop. That's it. Now let's see if it works. Okay, it doesn't work. Let's see why. Okay, we forgot to say this as a string. okay now it's working now as you can see maybe we can okay laptop form is not defined 
why is so okay we never imported all the forms so from dot forms import all that should be enough okay it's not working let's go to forms okay name laptop is not defined so we forgot to import laptops here too dot models import all now let's see if it's working laptops okay now as you can see we have successfully created the form and as we can see we don't have quite some room up there let's add some space add new let's add a break tag i think that should be enough okay now that's done now let's try adding some desktop into it let's say we have origin price thousand dollars item ready no issues add device okay we forgot to add csrf token so whenever you're submitting any form just make sure you're passing in a csrf token so csrf is nothing but like a cross write request forgery token so you always have to pass this um, as a security measure you can read read more about it in the django documentation so say csrf token we must pass this every time we change change something in the database that is not which is that is not being done by the admin panel so let's try that again laptops add laptop we are adding origin thousand dollars add device name redirect is not defined okay let's import a redirect also origin thousand dollars add device and that's it now as you can see we have origin thousand dollars available uh, the previous request also was accepted but it wasn't able to render the index page because we never defined the redirect page sorry redirect function now we have successfully completed with the laptops add button let's do the same with desktop button and mobile button so what we can do is copy this entire function paste it two times and rename everything but uh, we are right we are quite rewriting lot of code so let's do something different what i'm going to do is make this as a function like add device that is going to take a request and it's going to take a class as a parameter so instead of saying form equal to laptop form let's say it's going to say class request.post and the class so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take advantage of the fact that everything is an object in python and let's say define add laptop that is going to take a request and it's going to return the return value of the add device and that's going to be request and a laptop form let's do the same with desktop return add device request desktop so we are kind of like generalizing this function so that we don't have to rewrite the same code again and again add mobile request return add device request mobile i think you can do the same with the above add uh, above display functions maybe you can try that out so now what's left is just link them through the urls let's copy this let's just to paste this two times add laptop sorry add desktop add mobile add desktop mobile and let's link them through the index buttons button i mean uh, buttons in the index page it's the same thing rename this to add desktop rename this to add mobile 
and after this we can see all three buttons in the action laptops okay something went wrong invalid syntax we forgot to put commas okay it's working so laptops desktops and mobiles let's add a mobile mobile is not iterable we have a problem right here wait a second oh we have to pass the forms not the object let's try that out again laptops desktop okay okay now we are now you are able to see this let's add another desktop say dell pavilion i know that's wrong item restocking furious add device as we see we have successfully added it mobiles let's add another mobile one plus five one dollars add device as you can see we have successfully added the item and now we have all three all all of the six buttons functioning 